Lives on Broadway, Cost of Living. A story so intimate, mysterious, and powerful, if you don't find yourself in someone on stage, you're not looking. Cost of Living, don't miss it. Hey everyone, it's Richard Ridge for Broadway World. We are live tonight from Manhattan Theatre Club's Broadway premiere of Martina Mayoke's Cost of Living, and I am here with Cameron Mannheim. How are you? I am so good and so happy to be here, even in the rain. So you're my first guest tonight on the carpet. How excited are you to be here tonight? Well, there's nothing like an opening night. I'll tell you that right off the bat. It is always such a phenomenal experience. But I'm such a huge fan of Manhattan Theatre Club. I love everything that they do, so I'm thrilled to be here. I don't know anything about the play, which is one of my favorite. It's hard to not know something about a play, but there's something really special about kind of coming in blind. I know it's filled with amazing actors, amazing artists, and uh, so I, you should ask me afterwards. <laughs> no, but it's just Martina won the Pulitzer Prize for this in 2018, okay. and this play premiered at MTC's Off-Broadway Theater. Okay. Then it See? must be magnificent because it takes a, mir a miracle yeah. to move a play from Off-Broadway to Broadway. So I have very high expectations and I know it's going to be beautiful. I mean, I've heard a little, you know, chattering yeah. and how wonderful it is, but I really don't know anything about it, which is exciting. Well, let's just talk about this season. I mean, oh, it's going to be wild. I don't, my head is already yeah. going to explode. You got Death of a Salesman, the piano lesson, Sing Street is coming, Beautiful Mind is coming in. Like, it is, yeah. I don't even know what I'm going to do. Like, I have a full time job. How am I going to see all these plays? Well, let's talk about working in the theater because we've lost you to TV and film for a while. For a while. But, but I just, that's what I said, for a while. But you love, you love doing live theater, don't you? Oh, my God. I, about, Six years ago now, yeah. I did the Deaf West Spring yeah. Awakening sure. with 11 deaf actors. Yeah. It was remarkable. And uh, there is nothing like being on Broadway. The, yeah. Just the legacy, the traditions, everything that happens here. It is one of the most beautiful communities, yeah. I think, in the world. So you'd like to come back? Oh, my God. I would love to come back. Yes. Let's, uh, let's think about it. I got a couple director friends yeah. I could needle. Well, Broadway World fans, get it out there. Let's get her back on stage in New York. Think of some wonderful things to bring her back with. Cameron, always a pleasure to see, see you, my love. Thank you so Have much. the best time tonight. Hi, everybody, go to the theater, support artists. Perfect. We have Becky Ann Baker. Look. No, come on over, you. How are you? You know, I didn't want to be background in Cameron's Not at all. Shot. But this is what happens at a theater. We all run into our friends that we we've do. worked with and everything I know. else. I've known Cameron yeah. since 1990. Here's a great story. She was a reader when she was just a student yeah. on a play that I booked because she was my reader, because she was that good already. So I ended up getting a job because, because she was your reader. She was my reader. I love this. I know. I know. And it was Merrily We Roll Along yeah. down in Washington, D.C. And she helped me get a job with Stephen Sondheim. OK, well, let's talk about what was it like working with Stephen Sondheim? I was so lucky. I got to work with him four times. Yeah. and. Uh, when it was good, it was really, really yeah. good, like Assassins and Merrily. And when we had a little uh, struggle with a play in San Diego, he was not happy. But, yeah. um, you know, there you go. I mean, uh, when it was good, it was the best ever. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And let's talk about MTC, because you have quite a history working yeah. at this theater. Yeah, yeah, I did good people here. Yeah. I've done... Um, brilliant Durang, performance, Durang. brilliant performance, brilliant show. Uh, Wait, yeah. camera, come over here. She just told me just, there's a story. Get over here. Come yeah, over here, you yeah. two. Wait, 1990, I got a job because you were my reader, yeah. and she was that so good that I got the job because she was 
the, the person I was working with. They, I mean, it matters so much that you're not looking at somebody that is not with you. Yeah. And uh, so that's There's my story. There's another part to that story. And it was, I was a reader for, the, for Merrily We Roll she Along, was a a, Arena Stage, and Stephen Sondheim asked me if I could sing. And I can sing-ish, not, you know, like some yeah. people we know. And um, he asked me if I, he said to the reader, yeah. Um, let's let's get Cameron said she can sing. Let's call her agent and get her an audition. And I said, uh, Mr. Sondheim, I don't have an agent. Could you just call me and maybe maybe then we could set up an audition. And he turned to Natalie Hart. Remember Natalie and Jason yes, Labrador? Yes, yes. He turned to those people and said, Let's get Cameron an agent. Then call that agent and have her come in and read. Oh my gosh, he gave you an agent he right there. I mean, she was right you were still in school. No, but I got an agent from Stephen Sondheim. And then I read with this incredible person, not just her, but like yeah. Victor Garber. It was oh, the yeah. most exciting was time Garber, in my life. David Garrison, Maren Maisie, yeah. Mary Gordon Murray. It was a, a great cast. All of them. Yeah. And she yeah. got married. I just love that you got a job. You got an agent, agent. from. Got you got job. the job. <laughs> you got an agent from Stephen Sondheim. Yes. I got an agent yes. from Stephen Sondheim. Everybody thought he was just writing music, but now. Yeah. No, <laughs> he was getting you an agent. Oh, excuse me. I'm very yeah. popular. She, she I got very popular. You go take that call. Okay. Well, no, so let's. Oh, yeah. No, no, but oh, let's oh, talk oh, about working finished. here. But okay. So how, but that's an incredible Durang, story. Durang okay, was yeah. my yep. first play at MTC. It was at the. As city center, yeah. those stages, sure. and uh, it was short plays by Christopher Durang, and it was more fun than anyone should have ever yeah. had ever. And then good people here, and then of course my husband's done a bunch of plays oh, here. Dylan's so done a lot have, of stuff yeah. here. So we we have a, a lovely history with Lynn and Barry, and we, we love working here, and we love seeing plays here. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this one. Well, what have you heard about Cost of Living? Because I saw this off Broadway. I saw it yeah. at Williamstown. Oh, you with, saw it from the beginning. I saw it yeah. in its wee-wee history, um, but it didn't have David Zayas, who's a very close oh, friend yeah. of mine. So not only am I so excited to see this play again, it's brilliant, but I'm thrilled to see my friend David Zayas yeah. in the role that, you know, he's okay. in so that I play. saw this show a few nights ago. All four of them are brilliant. It's so great to have David back on stage again, yes. like living yes. eight shows a week and getting the, the theater back in yeah. his muscle memory yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah and his wife. And I mean, I'm telling yeah. you, they're just the, the, not only are they amazing actors, yeah. but they're uh, great. So David Zayas is part of a poker group that my husband is part yeah. of. And as I look back here, all his poker buddies are waving. They're all here tonight yeah. because that's, <laughs> that's the kind of... Uh, you know, yeah. wonderful support uh, that actors have for each other, you know? Well, you know, Manhattan Theatre Club is such a wonderful nonprofit. It's one of the most successful anywhere in the world. Yeah. And they do so much. I mean, when for people to visit their website, they do so much for, like, people oh. under 30 and, and make tickets accessible oh to young students and young people. I think it has something to do young too, people. with Lynn and Barry. Yeah. They've been around for so long. Yeah. I mean, like, since the 70s. Yeah. And uh, so not only do they have a history with uh, producing successful, brilliant theater, yeah. but they have a history with making it accessible yeah. to everyone. And, yeah. um, you know, people with low income or no income, like most actors, yeah. and when they're starting out especially. And um, uh, so, yeah, I can't yeah. say enough about them. Well, listen, have the best time okay. tonight. Thank We're so live much. tonight. Come on over, you two. Hi. We're going around the world. Yeah, I was just, singing your praises. just singing both of your praises here. Oh, I was going to say, come on over, you two. Two minutes is too soggy. No, come on over here, but we're going around the world it's tonight. So soggy. We are. So your the fans at Broadway World were like, please do a live carpet tonight. We're doing a live carpet here for your opening here. Great. We all fell in love with this show at your Off Broadway Theater with yes. Cost of Living. How excited are you two tonight for the Broadway premiere that you're doing here at the Freedman? We are very excited, as we always are. Barry, what number show? This is the fifty-fourth Broadway show in the Freedman since we opened it as the Biltmore in 19, 2003. So there were 54 we productions here. 54 productions. And, yeah. and Cost of Living we yeah. produced at City yeah. Center five years ago. Yeah. And everybody's intact. We've got, we've got the old gang, we've yeah. got some new faces, and we mostly have a wonderful play by a terrific writer and a, a lovely company and a great evening on Broadway. Yeah. Okay. It's a Pulitzer Prize winning play too. You have the best eye, the two of you, for playwrights. I mean, this one, the Pulitzer Prize, well, it's both of you, but 2018, right? Yes. Martina yes. won. Exactly. This play is so 
for right now too. I was there the other night, four brilliant performances, beautifully directed, but I mean, just what is, talk about what it says now what this story stands for. This, this play is very meaningful yeah. because, first of all, for us, there's an underrepresented population oh, yes. on, on Manhattan Theater Club's stage, which really means a lot to me and Barry and to all of us at Manhattan Theater Club. And Martina Mayock is a great playwright. Yeah. This is a play about people people dealing with challenges yeah. and facing challenges, overcoming challenges, looking at challenges, but ultimately prevailing. And, and there's hope in this play and there's tremendous humanity and a great playwright and a wonderful company. Thank you always for dropping by at Broadway World. 54, that's amazing, just on Broadway. Yeah? 54, yes. Have a great time tonight, you two. Great to see you. Eric Bogosian is on the carpet. This is what happened. I love that story with Cameron Mannheim and, and Becky Ann Baker. I'm fascinated by that story that Stephen Sondheim got Cameron an agent and Becky got a job. Really, really exciting. Hopefully Eric will stop by and say hello to us on the carpet here for the opening night of Cost of Living. So, you know, let's go to an interview or two that we did the other day in the rehearsal room for Cost of Living. We'll be right back. Feel? Yeah. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. That's fucking cool. <laughs> Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World, following a critically acclaimed sold-out run at Manhattan Theatre Club's Off-Broadway Stage 1, Martina Mayork's Pulitzer Prize winning play, Cost of Living, which is directed by Joe Bonney, will open on Broadway on October 3rd at MTC's Samuel J. Friedman Theatre, and we drop by the rehearsal room to meet the company. First of all, you're about to come to Broadway with your fabulous play. How excited are you? I'm so excited. I'm very, very excited. I'm happy to share the play with more people. And um, yeah, it's a very, very big moment. It means a lot to me. Collaborating with Martina is full of spirit and heart because that's what she brings to it. Martina also, she has a great heart, but she also has a wonderful sense of humor. And so it's that, you know, how you use humor to sort of crack open your heart and the possibilities. I think that's very much part of this storytelling. And we are back on the opening night red carpet. Tell everybody who you are. Hi, my name is Andrea Siglowski. I am an actor and a very good friend of the playwright Martina yeah. Mayok. How excited are you to be here tonight? I'm so thrilled. I saw this play off Broadway opening night, and I turned to Martina and I said, "I think your play is going to win the Pulitzer," and it yeah. did. So I'm thrilled to be celebrating this with these amazing actors, Greg and Kara yeah. and Katie and. Um, and David, so I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Isn't it wonderful that it went from off-Broadway and now it's on-Broadway? I think it, this yeah. is where it should be. Totally. So yes, so, yeah. I'm thrilled. And um, I just am excited to see this beautiful story yeah. told through the most capable hands in the industry. So I'm, I'm thrilled, I'm so excited. It's such a beautiful play. I was here the other night, but I fell in love with it off-Broadway too. Yes. And yes. then Becky Ann Baker's here tonight who saw it at Williamstown. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I believe in Martina more. Yeah. I, she's the, the most important, one of the most yes. important voices in the American theater, so we're lucky to have her. Had the most beautiful time. You look Thank gorgeous. You. Thank you so much. Welcome to opening night. Thank you. Nice Thank to you. see you as Thank always. You. Let's just stay live for a second, because we have Eric right here. Let's see if Eric will stop by. Hey, Eric, how are you, sir? We are live tonight, going around the world for the opening of Cost of Living. Yes. So tell me how excited you are to be here tonight, sir. Well, I am beyond excited because Joe Bonney is the director of the play tonight yes. and Joe I am married to Joe Bonney and she has directed me many times and she's directed many many plays but this is her Broadway debut yeah. so I'm very excited I'm also excited for Martina I'm excited for the cast I'm uh, personal friends with a couple of people in the cast and I think this is just a this is everything that theater should yeah. be it is it is funny uh, but it's also uh, great dramatic writing, and um, and I hate to say it, but it's a really important topic that when you see this play, you will not think the same way after you see this play, and that's true due to the bravery and the wonderfalness of this cast, Greg and Katie and yeah. and David and Kara. They're just they're it's it's everything theater should be. Because I caught up with the cast a few weeks ago in the rehearsal room, of course, with your lovely wife, who I've known for a long time. That, like you said, this is such an important play. I fell in love with this off-Broadway when Manhattan Theatre Club first produced it there. Yes. 
it won the Pulitzer Prize too. Is that wild? Is that great? Yeah, it is great. Yeah. The, uh, the, the only thing, I wish it could run longer than it's going to be running, so people have to come and see it now because this is when they're going to get a chance to see it. Um, I mean, I love this theater. I love Manhattan Theater Club. I was on this stage, I guess, 10 years ago, and that was pretty exciting. So 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it just serves such a great purpose of injecting serious drama into our theater world in a way that, uh, you know, is very accessible and people can come and see uh, this great stuff. If we didn't have Manhattan Theater yeah. Club, we wouldn't be able to platform this kind of really strong work like this with strong writers. So that's I did it. This is such incredible work that Manhattan Theater Club has done. They have such a great eye for picking playwrights and scripts, you know? Yes. They do really great work. Yes. and. You know, I, I, I happen to be in a TV project right now, uh, Interview with the Vampire, yeah. and that was written by Roland Jones, and Roland Jones is another uh, uh, one of our uh, playwrights from our world uh, who writes great plays. So, you know, it's this is, the, this is the culture we live in. This is a culture that is fed with our theater, our serious theater, and here it is, and you can come and see it. Listen, Eric, always a pleasure to see you, my friend. You, yes. Have a great yeah, time tonight. Yep. Too. Give him the tickets. Give him some tickets. Yeah, give him some tickets. How are you? Good, how are you? Oh, good no, to see good you to see again, you. Richard Ridge, yeah. That's right, Richard, how yeah. are you? We are live tonight going around the world for the opening. Oh, yes. So tell everybody who you are. I'm Raul Castillo. How excited are you to be here tonight? I'm really, really excited. I'm excited to see David Zayas and Greg Mosgala and Cara yeah. Young. It's such an incredible cast. I'm really, really thrilled to be here. First time seeing the show tonight? Yeah, first time. And I know nothing going in, which is an exciting way to kind of uh, get to know the play. No, because Cameron Mannheim said the same thing. It's nice sometimes to go to the theater where you don't really, you know it, you'd have a great time, but right. you know nothing about it, yeah. and you sit there and take an incredible journey, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. yeah. Now, we lost you for a little while to TV and film. Yeah. <laughs> How much fun was that, working on TV and film? I mean, it's been it's been wonderful, but I'm, in, I'm actually doing my first play in eight years. Yeah. It's American Television, it's a New York Theater Workshop um, by Victor I. Casares. It's a wonderful play, with great cast, and... It's exciting to be back on stage after uh, uh, you know such a long uh, absence. Did you miss us? I did. I yeah. did. I mean, I've never stopped going to theater. Yeah. You know, yeah. but I live in New York, so I get to see some of the best uh, theater in the world. And, and uh, but I, I did miss being back on stage. I mean, the first preview we had an audience yeah. was kind of a, a terrifying out of body experience, and then. And then it, you know, then it became like you know, riding a bike. And it, 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 it's something I've been doing since I was 14 years old, and it, it just it came back to me right away. So, yeah. but it's great to have that feeling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 100. Yes. percent And and to bring you know the television and film audience that I have uh, cultivated to the theater now is, is really exciting. Because I was going to mention to you, since you know, because of your notoriety on film and TV, people mm -hmm. would be like, "Oh my God, he's doing something called live theater." <laughs> you don't know, but we were all introduced to something like that. That must make you feel really great Absolutely. that you're introducing a whole new audience to live theater. One hundred percent. I've had looking fans come to see the play, which yeah. is really exciting because some of the themes are, you know, um, I think relevant to the to the fans yeah. of looking, to the fans of weedy animals, you know, that kind of thing. So it, it's it's a, and and to and to be part of a, the birth of a new play yeah. is really really exciting. Because it's created with you and for you at the exactly. same time. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Have Thank a great, you. good to see you again. Yeah, likewise. Really nice. How are you? I'm well. How good are to you? see you. We are live tonight at Broadway World. Oh, this is a good thing. Oh, we're going all around. <laughs> Tell everybody who you are. I'm Eric King. How excited are you to be here tonight for the opening of Cost of Living? I'm very excited. I'm excited to see David Zayas. Yep. I'm excited to see the, this wonderful piece of work, this heart-centered piece of work. I'm yep. excited about it, you know, especially during this time. Yeah. During this time when so many people are trying to find their way and reconnect, this is a piece about connecting and looking out for each other, so I'm excited about it. But, I mean, the play is such an important play. Yeah. Had you seen it before? I've never seen it. Yeah, so I'm excited to see David in his role. Yeah. Because I don't have any other image of any other actor playing it, you know? It's so great. There are so many fans of all four of them, but many people are seeing David again, like yeah. back on stage again, yeah. right? I'm really excited. You yeah. know, I mean, he's my guy. He's my Dexter guy, so I'm yeah. excited about that. How about getting you back on stage? I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Of course, I'm excited. It's do you miss it? Come back. I do miss it. Yeah. I do miss it. Now that we're all back together, yeah. you know, there's nothing like the shared experience of being in a theater. So sure. I'm excited. But I love your glasses, by the way. Thank bro. you very much. <laughs> Always a pleasure to see you, my friend. My Have a great time tonight. Morgan Spector's on the carpet. Would you drop by for one quick second? Come on down to me. We're live tonight, going around the world. Oh wow! Look at that. So this, yeah, we're we're moving up in the world. Fantastic. How excited are you to be here tonight for the opening of Cost of Living? I'm thrilled. I, you know, I did, I had the very good fortune to work with Martina oh. uh, kind of early on uh, off Broadway at the Rattlestick, 
Um, and I just thought she was so brilliant. Yeah. And she's just, she's like, she's the she's the kindest, loveliest person, but she's yeah. got the hardest edge yeah. uh, of almost anyone I've ever met. Um, and as a writer and as an artist, I just think that's that's. The, the American theater couldn't be luckier to have her, and I'm thrilled that she's here, and I'm thrilled for all of her success, and I'm happy to be here to celebrate it. She's got a Pulitzer Prize. I mean, who could? I mean, I can believe it, yeah. but it's amazing. Yeah. But I just love her story that she had lost her job bartending, went home yeah. to write this play. Right. It's a fascinating story. No, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, I think you know the thing. I think Martina's writing about the real world. Yeah. I think that's just like it is. It, it's surprising and shocking to many people who kind of don't live in it. Yeah. But she knows it, and she's writing about it. And then I'm I'm glad she's here. Okay, let's talk about your facial hair. It's obviously for season two of the Gilded Age, right? True. Yes. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So you're filming right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. We are. We're uh, we're filming. Um, we've been all over. We're yeah. most mostly out on Long Island, but we've been in Newport. We've been in Troy. Yeah. We're. Uh, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's bigger and and grander than ever. So yes. That's what the, do you uh, love? What do you love the most about playing this fascinating character? Talk about who you play. I play George Russell yeah. on The Gilded Age, and he is uh, he's something of a monster, but he's also a sweetie yeah. with his wife and kids. And it's you know it's a, it's always fun to play somebody who is kind of uh, going in two extreme directions simultaneously. But the best thing about the show is the cast. It's yeah. you know it's all New York theater people. It's sure amazing. It do you miss the stage? Um, yeah, I do. But also, I don't really live in. I've become a parent in the last yeah. several years, and um, you know I know people have been talking about this a little bit more lately. But it's hard. It's yeah, hard. It's, it's hard yeah. to do six days a week and not and not see your kids. And um, yeah, it's I don't know. I've been debating. I really want to come back and do yeah. something, but that's the part of it that's tough. Um, I, I also don't really live in the city anymore, yeah. so that's yeah. Can you tell us anything about season two, or you're not allowed? Um, no, I, t I totally can't. I could I probably, know. if I had a second, I could sort through it, it and figure out something to tell you, but no. Yeah. But we're just thrilled with the theater cast and everything else. Oh and God, you are so wonderful Thank you so to much. watch you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Good to see you. I think they're sending you back down here to yes. this way to do some interviews. Good to see you, Morgan, as always. So we're still on the carpet. You know what? Let's see for a second. Why don't you go to an interview or two, and we'll be right back on the red carpet for Cost of Living. So many moments reading this play that I literally like had to stop and like have a moment to myself and I was like crying and I was like oh my god what what happened and we are back for the opening night red carpet of cost of living here at Manhattan Theatre Club tell everybody who you are I'm Zuzana Sharkovsky and I'm a dear friend of the playwright yeah. um, so hello to everyone in Poland <laughs> How excited are you to be here tonight for her uh, Broadway premiere, actually, Pulitzer Prize winner? Oh, it's so huge. It's it's exciting and it's thrilling and it's yeah. well deserved, which is the most important part. <laughs> I'm fascinated by her story. I mean, I interviewed her. She's one of the loveliest people in the world. Oh, yes. But the journey she took about how she wrote this play, she was fired as a bartender, and she decided <laughs> to sit at home and write a play, and then it goes on to be produced, and then it wins a Pulitzer Prize. Incredible, and she's so yeah. disciplined, and that's the yeah. thing is like, she can turn any experience, she has such a uh, yes. depth of understanding and humanity, and she can turn that into to the written word, which is just a huge gift. So let's talk about what you love the most about this play. I, I fell in love with this off Broadway first right. at Manhattan too. Theater Club, and then I fell in love with it all over again, and just fell in love with all the all of those four characters on that stage. Yes, I did too. Yeah, I think that it's. I mean, the dialogue is extraordinary. She knows how to write human, yep. uh, just from the heart, human yep. to human conversation, how people see into each other's souls, and she knows she can capture that, which is just extraordinary and beautiful. And you know, not every playwright can do that. Oh no. I mean, these are such beautifully defined people. Yes, they are, absolutely. Yeah, and she, I, I worked with her before I was in her play Queens yeah. at Lincoln Center. Yeah, totally. and to And when you're taking on those words, it's so, uh, it's so easy because her writing is so powerful and so yeah. deep, you can just step right into the role. <laughs> How proud are you now she's on Broadway now? Making I'm so her proud and impressed by her, yeah. yes. Yes. Listen, have the best time. Thank you for dropping so by, as always. Have the best Thank time you. tonight, all right? Now I think we're going to go to an interview from the rehearsal room of Cost of Living. We'll be right back on the red carpet. Stay with us at Broadway World. Oh my again. God! The first the first day of rehearsals, you're just like it's like the greatest first day of school ever. It's like coming home, being in this room with these people. I have become so close with Joe and Martina, and they've become. 
And we're back on the opening night red carpet for Cost of Living here at Manhattan Theatre Club. Tell everybody who you are. Well, my name is Marin Ireland, and this is my mother, Carol. Hi. That we met numerous times I before. I know we did. I know. Right, how excited are the two of you to be here tonight? Oh, my gosh. Beyond, yeah. beyond awesome. Well, I'm, she's seen Ironbound quite a few times, yeah. which is Martina's play that I was in at the Geffen oh, yeah. and here in New York. So she's a big fan of Martina's as this well. This is a lovely surprise. Oh, did you surprise her tonight? Well, I said, yes. well, I surprised We're my going mom. going to a play. That's yes. right. That's right. <laughs> and isn't it great that you're going to a play? Like, I, I know the playwright. Right. <laughs> it's just beautiful. It's beyond beautiful. I love Martina. I it's think so she is so brilliant. I mean, she won the Pulitzer Prize yes. for this. I first fell in love with this show off Broadway yes. at Manhattan Theater Club, and many people fell in love with this at Williamstown. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. I hadn't seen it there, but I knew of it because yeah. I'll, I'll often read things of hers before productions yeah. and things, so I feel like I have the inside track. Okay. So I, I'm, I can't. I mean, this feels overdue to me, yeah. but I'll also, I'll take it whenever it happens, especially with the COVID of it yeah. all and everything. Thank God it's happening now. I'm just so thrilled for her. But this is such a brilliant play. Tell me what you love the most about the play. You know, I think the thing that thrilled me the most about it was so surprising is how funny it was, yeah. which I always think about with Martina's stuff as like. What's so, I think her her trademark yeah. is finding the humor in all of these yeah. things and the anger in all of it and that the anger can be funny and that everyone's going through like the maybe the worst moment in their life or whatever time it is and the fact that she, the characters that she writes lean into yeah. this like energy that drives them forward and it's so funny yeah. and I'm so grateful for that. That's what we need, right? Some joy. But that's what I thought the first time I saw yeah. this. I knew it was a serious subject dealing with these four serious characters. Yeah. But it was funny it was all so at the same funny. time. Yeah. And Katie Sullivan. Oh, let's talk about her. I could talk about her all day. Yeah. I mean, I was lucky enough to get, I presented her with um, the Theatre World Award yeah, for know. Cost of Living. And I would give her an award every week if I could. I think she's just extraordinary. I've never seen a performer like her in my life. Her, the way she like literally cuts through sure. in this way that I, I've almost never experienced. I feel like your, your, your hair is blown back. And then there's Greg. <laughs> and then there's Greg, who yeah. I've also known for so long. And he's been somebody who's been working downtown for so long. And yeah. to get to see him in a role like this on Broadway, Wonderful. Again, it's overdue, but I'll take it whenever it comes. And then there's David Sayas, who is back on Broadway for like the first time. And Carrie Young, hello. Oh, all right, let's talk about falling in we love with her. About everybody, I well, know. There's all four of them, exactly. I know. With the, yeah. uh, with, I mean, I, I think I saw Kara with Halfway Bitches Go to Heaven, right? And that was like mind boggling. She is fierce. She is I mean, unreal. She, they all are. They all are. Yeah. They all are. I, so I can't wait to see this pair. I mean, I'm, I'm so glad to yeah. like get to see this a new brand new pairing with these yeah. actors just for that, just for that extra. And then there's Joe Bonnie as the director. Come on, we're going to start screaming in a minute. We we're going to be so excited. Joe no, Bonnie! Martina! It's so exciting. All right, I think I spoke to you before. When did you first realize that she wanted to become an actress? She was like eight years old. Eight years old? She put on a little pair of red shoes for Wizard of Oz. Are you serious? Because she's the shyest person. She used to cry. You know, see, this is what happens. Everybody sees everybody that they know, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, what? Oh, yeah, what? Yeah, what? <laughs> He was in Ironbound with I me. I know he was. So yeah. we can talk to each other like I this. I learned my whole part in two days. Okay, all right, take all it right. easy. Take it easy. You know, show up, right? What's There's that? Martina right behind I know. This is, and She's the playwright is right behind her. She's a movie star. We're going to pull her over here shortly, too, but it's like, but let's just talk. What were we yeah, talking Oh, sorry. when you first found out. I feel like it's my, my, it's my show, too. But it is, though, because, you know, it's like, you know, we all. There's nothing like the theater world. This is what we all do. We nurture everybody. I know. I but know. I just love her story. But, you know, she was a bartender and then, you know, lost her job and started to write a play. Who does that, right? Who, who, who does, does that? It? Yeah. And who and, does that? And yeah. I got to know her mom because doing Ironbound yeah. was yeah. similar to her mother's story. Yeah. And so Justina and I became pals. And we, it's, it's like, it's the greatest. Her relationship with her mother is very beautiful. Yeah. She was excited that I was coming with my mom oh, tonight. Yeah. Cause, yeah. So back, she was eight years old and put on Darby's red slippers for The Wizard of Oz. Because she was so shy when she cry in school. The teacher said, maybe that'll get her out of it. And then that was it. You couldn't get her off the stage. Yeah. That was it. That was that was the solution to my shyness. So what was your first performance? Like at school, do you remember? It was like Christmas in Oz. It was that. It was the, it was the, it was a Christmas sequel. in Oz. So she had to go back for Christmas. So Dorothy goes back to Christmas. Yes, I, I don't remember much about it. You do though, right? Oh yeah. I'm like, who is that girl up there? That's my daughter. That's my daughter. Why? Right, listen, I got to get you inside. Okay. There's so many more people. I could talk to you forever. Go in there. Go Thank in there. You so much. Good to see you both. So now we're really gonna go. Well, let's see who's no. Show, let's show Joey. Can you go over to the carpet right now? Because Martina is right here with her family, the Pulitzer Prize-winning playwright, of course, from Cost of Living. We are here tonight at the Samuel J. Friedman Theater for the Broadway premiere of her play, Cost of Living. 
everyone's hugging and doing everything on the carpet. This is what happens in the theater. This is all great. Look at these two over here. There goes Marin with Martina. Can we take you over? Yeah. We're live tonight at Broadway Hi. World. How are you? Hello, Broadway World. Tell everybody who you are. I am Liza Colonzeas of The Bear, yep. and my husband is in this play, and he's killing it. And your husband is who? David Zayas. We want to welcome him back. He is. So, I, I just want to hear you say his name. He is so brilliant in this. And I talked. I saw the show a few nights ago, uh -huh. but I talked to David in the rehearsal room. He's so excited to be back on stage again. He is. He has yeah. worked so hard. He's so excited. He loves this cast, yeah. and this is the best. So thank you. Thank so what you. What was it like having him at home rehearsing the? Did he rehearse the dialogue with you? Are you his Constantly. reader at home? Tell me what happens. Tell me what happens at home when Constantly. he's learning. When he was learning this play. Oh my goodness! Yeah. It, you played it, all the roles. Yeah, well, it, there's only one other person, yeah, 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 yeah. pero, yeah, it would be like, it's supposed to be our, you know, series night yeah. where we watch our show, yeah. we're supposed to be, and we, and we are constantly, well, but he him, rocked it. A perfectionist, he's so wonderful in this show as everybody is. Have you seen it on Broadway yet? Have you seen it? I've seen it twice. Yeah. Yes, I'm a huge fan yeah. of David Zayas. Yeah. Well, it's great to see you. Have a great time tonight. Always a pleasure. I'll see David after the show, and I'm sure I'll see you then, too. Always a pleasure to see you, my love. We have Martina right here. She's next to us on the carpet. No, no, go do your thing. Listen, so we're going to go. We're going to catch up with Martina in a minute or so. Let's go to some interviews from the rehearsal room of Cost of Living, and we'll be right back. Dear friends, I mean, we're separate from, from all of this, but... Being able to sit down and read this play after a number of years and after, you know, what we've all gone through in the last couple of years and how crazy the world has gotten, it's just so poignant and so exciting and so beautiful. Uh, who's just moved uh, to Princeton from uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, he's a PhD student, uh, highly intelligent, very wealthy, um, and he is, uh, he hires Jess as his personal care attendant, and it's about their relationship uh, throughout the course of the play. This is one of those rare plays where that just jumped off the page for me. Um, and to be able to find a part like John that is similar to my, my own experience, right? I knew right away that these don't, the parts like this don't come along and I knew right away that I wanted to be the one to do it. So uh, it's just um, a thrill, an honor, uh, and I can't wait to share it with, with uh, you know, a Broadway audience. character in the play is Ani, um, and she and her husband are separated and kind of going through the, uh, the process of separation and divorce. And during that process, she gets into uh, an accident, changes her life completely, and it's really, at least from my perspective of this play, is really how do these two people try to come together and have a re what looks like a relationship after something catastrophic and tragic happens. Yeah, no, I think not only as an actor is it a dream to get to Broadway, you know, and be making that debut, uh, but I think as a, you know, as a person with a disability, playing a character with a disability, that is a, a new kind of novel concept. It means a great deal to me, both personally and professionally. And I know it's going to mean a great deal to people who, uh, to see themselves uh, on stage in a really wonderful way. Third prize winner arrives on Broadway. Cost of Living. A story so intimate, mysterious, and powerful, if you don't find yourself in someone on stage, you're not looking. Cost of Living. Don't miss it.
characters that are so resilient and are literally working to survive. Um, but I, I love that about her, and I also love the fact that she's first-gen American like myself, and, you know, there have been certain things that are instilled in her um, in regards to what it means to work hard, to exceed expectations, but there's something about her spirit that keeps on going even when hope is lost and her will to stay alive and her will to continue and her will to show up is something that you know a lot of us we're doing now you know And we're back on the open air red carpet and you were gonna play right yourself. Tell everybody who you are. Okay. Oh, so I'm so excited! Yes, I'm thrilled! So many friends here. I can't wait for this one. We're really proud of it. Okay, you know, I saw you in the universal room. You were the first boat and you get all the money to share on the show. Could you have so many friends in here? journey you've been on with this like what made you start writing the play how did it come about uh, a few a few things well, I was dealing with a lot of economic insecurity at yeah. the time um, I love that phrase economic insecurity yeah, yeah. another way of saying no. poor oh, I love that though. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh, I had just moved to New York um, I'd also just lost a family member that was really close to me um, and I couldn't afford to go to his funeral which was in Poland um, and I was, yeah, I was dealing with a lot of grief and it was a, a blizzardy January Saturday night. Yeah. I had just got fired from a bartending job because I thought I had stolen $100. I That's didn't. crazy. I, I didn't, know. but I wish I did because I still got fired for it anyways. But look, you're on Broadway now. Fine. Yeah, now the hundred dollars is fine. But uh, yeah, it was it was really me trying to. Um, I, I, I vo these characters sort of came to me, but as composites of people that I grew up with, people that I know. Um, I used to be a caregiver, yeah. um, and uh, it it was really once the characters came, I was trying to figure out what these four people were trying to say to each other, what, were they, what, what how they were speaking to one another, and I think what came about was uh, a play about American loneliness. Uh, our need to connect, the, the things that get in the way of us connecting, um, privilege, uh, various forms of privilege, and um, and some scenes in bathrooms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beautifully written. <laughs> Thank you. Let's talk about your incredible cast of four. Oh. I love them so much, yeah. truly. I cannot wait for you, for yeah. everyone out there to see these amazing actors. They're, they're stunning. They're wonderful. And then there's Joe Bonnie, your director. Yeah, it's best best friend Joe Bonnie. Yeah, it's and lovely. she's making her Broadway debut yes. tonight. Cause I spoke to her, her husband Eric tonight. He's so excited to be here, but I can't believe it. She's make it's taken her this long to uh, make her truly. Broadway debut. But to make it with your play is really exciting. Thank you. Actually, the first play yeah. I saw on the stage was with Eric Bogosian. Yeah. Eric was on. The, uh, I think it was Time Stand Still that I saw. Yeah. So it's nice. It's nice kind of strange full circle. Yes, yeah. But yeah, no, it's wonderful. She absolutely deserved to. I mean, if, yeah, it's if, if actually meaningful. She met, she deserves to be on Broadway. She's yeah. extraordinary. 
Well, so do you, like I said. I never asked you, you won the Pulitzer Prize. When you got the call, like, did you scream? What went through your mind? Um, I was supposed to be in jury duty that day. <laughs> So I, yeah. which I did, I wasn't chosen. Uh, it was a rainy day, much like today. Yeah. Uh, and I had to come back home to do my taxes because they were due the next day. So, you know, <laughs> just a, a shit show all, all around. Yeah. And at th on three in the afternoon, I got a call from my agent telling me that I'd won the Pulitzer. And I, for nine minutes and 48 seconds, because it's immortalized in my phone, yeah did not believe him. Yeah. I cursed at him. I was like, how dare you? I'm like, doing taxes. You know, I'm doing taxes. It's not funny. I'm going to owe all this money. Like, no, he was like, he was like, no, it's for real. And I'm uh, like, fine, fine. He was like, hang up. And he, I hear all of the agency just laughing yeah. at me. Uh, so he was like, hang up, yeah. give it a minute. And I think you'll find that you won the poster. And I did. And I saw that, um, the, I saw I had 20 texts. Yeah. And the first one was Steven Allen And I was like, oh shit, I think it's for real. <laughs> and then I don't remember the rest of the night because it was, I, I no. drank, so it was great. It was, <laughs> <laughs> so well deserved. Congratulations. You. Have the best time. I'll see you afterwards Thank downstairs. You, I adore you. Get I over here. You. you have the best no. time. You look Thank gorgeous. You. You. That's how it's done. Oh my. Ruben Santiago Hudson is on the carpet. We'll be right back with Ruben. Why don't we go to an interview or two from the rehearsal room? We'll be right back on the opening night red carpet of Cost of Living here at the Samuel J. Friedman Theater. Be right back. When I came in, it was such a great energy of because I got so much to learn from everybody in the room. Uh, you know, like uh, Katie and Greg has done it in the past. So I'm really just watching them and, and understanding the process of it as we go along. And it's been a wonderful experience already. It's been one week since we started and uh, it's been fantastic. It's been great. I am beyond excited to be able to bring, to be with this play and, and to have been with it this whole journey and getting to go to Broadway is sort of a pinch me. Are you kidding? I mean, uh, it's the dream, right? To have to be with this play for as long as I've been with it and to take it to the very top, it's, um, it's beyond anything I could have ever imagined. Cost of living is about interconnectedness, the complexity and essentiality of care. These are people who, in the moving forward of, of life, there is little room for sentimentality because they're Welcome back, everybody, on the opening night live red carpet for Cost of Living. I'm here with director Sam Gold. Sam, how excited are you to be here tonight? I'm really excited to see everybody. I didn't get to see this play downtown somehow and um, have been dying to see it for a long time. Okay, it is brilliant. I fell in love with this off-Broadway when it was first done, but many people here tonight fell in love with her play in Williamstown. And it's such an incredible play. Do you know about her work at all, Martina? Yeah, she's yeah. a beautiful writer, and I'm so glad that this play's been singled out and i um, really excited to celebrate. Yeah. Do you know about the story? Have you, have you heard about what it's about? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sounds exciting. So tell me um, what you're working on right now. Can you tell us anything? Uh, my next show will be a production of Three Sisters by Chekhov yeah. with a new adaptation by Claire Barron. Um, that's the next thing I'm working on. Where's it going to be done? Can New York you... Theater Workshop. Yeah. Okay, you worked there before. Yeah, it'll be my third play down there. Yeah, under a new artistic director, some new fresh blood down there. And yeah, yeah it's been a lot of fun working on it. What's it like doing Chekhov? You've done it before. Yeah, you know, they're like um, plays where everybody is like real people on yeah. stage. So they're, it's catnip for actors. You have a wonderful time working with actors. And it's some of my favorite stuff to do. Yeah. And working down there at New York Theatre Workshop, what it means to you? Yeah, so they gave me my first job, and oh. um, I've loved that theatre forever, and it's a beautiful little building, yeah. and I, I, I always love working in there. And how exciting it is that this play started off-Broadway, and now they're making their Broadway debut. She is, and so is Joe Bonney, the director. This is Joe's is first Broadway yeah. show? That can't be possible. It is. It, is that amazing? That boggles my mind. Yeah. She's been doing beautiful work for so, so long. I'm yeah. glad glad to celebrate her tonight, too. So good to see you as always, yeah. Sam. Thanks we'll be down there at New York Theatre Workshop. Good to see you, my friend. That's Sam Gold on the carpet. We have Ruben Santiago Hudson. We are live tonight, my friend. We're going around the world. We're live? We're li yeah, isn't this wild at Broadway World? How excited are you to be back at your theatre? I call it 
It's partly your theater, the Samuel J. Friedman, because yeah. you just left it. I have a little blood on the stage. I've yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I've spilled yeah. some blood on the stage yeah. in tears, and I'm so excited for Broadway, you know, to open up and now to see this crowd, see these people, MTC, a more remarkable new show to start the season. Yeah. It's just it's just exciting time. Uh, Broadway is starting four black plays playwrights on Broadway oh, to yeah. start out the season. So that's wonderful. Things are moving forward, and I am so excited, and I just want to be a part of it to, to extend and to help create the power and continue the power of theater, man. The health of theater is in our hands. We got to keep it healthy. Well, let's talk about Lackawanna Blues, your beautiful play that you brought to Broadway, back to Broadway here. What did you enjoy the most about doing it on Broadway this time around? The Lackawanna Blues, what I enjoyed most was being with my mother. Anytime I could visit with my mother is a beautiful day for me and a blessed day. So I enjoyed that. And then to also let other people be reminded of that person in their lives, you and everyone in that audience, your uncle, your father, your mother, your grandmother. You know what I mean? It's yeah. important. But what I love about when you brought it back, I was sitting, I saw the show numerous times here, and there were many different age groups there, people who had seen the show originally, yes. now are bringing their kids back to experience you and experience this show, what that means to you. It means a lot because we need theater to, to survive by generations. Yeah. People have to continue and their grandkids have to continue and to offer something like Lackawanna Blues, which is heartfelt, and, and particularly people of color can really yeah. look up there and say, this is possible, what this man did. Because never like we talked about it, and, you know, the things that I accomplished in that play. But just to get on that stage and be on a Broadway stage and for little black kids to see that, you know, little, little Latino kids to see that. It means the world to me that I have influenced or could influence. I had that power to in through influence and be important yeah. just because of my art. What I love to do, what I would do in the kitchen, and just me and you drinking tea yeah. and then knowing that it affects people in a positive way. Isn't that wonderful about being creative in the arts of how it moves people, not just from a creative standpoint, but what you give people and that give and take back and forth with a live audience? Absolutely. It was the place I found out I had a voice. It was the place yeah. I found out that I did matter because I was a little black boy in a room and house in Lackawanna and everybody didn't think I did matter. Yeah. And then I got on stage and I shared my heart and soul and people said, we got you. And they embraced me. They wrapped their arms around me and I never stopped acting and performing and writing. So I love that. You act, you write, and you direct. I mean, you're one of the most sought after directors. What do you enjoy the most about directing? That I can give other people opportunities, yeah. and that I'm in the room, and then I can be the, the buffer of, uh, uh, of the integrity of the productions that tell the stories of my people, and any people. Yeah. yeah. And let's talk about wearing three different hats. Like when you're the actor, the writer, and the director, what that's like being in the room with yourself. Well, you know, yeah. I know you got to talk to other people, so no, we no, need to do an hour. Well, you know, it's just like yeah. I have to respect yeah. each, pos each position. Yeah. And I have to remove myself from the other two when I'm in one. Yeah. And that's difficult. It's not mm -hmm. schizophrenic, but it's the way I have to approach the job to be yeah. clear about what I need in each position. What does the writer need? And then I, more than anything, I have to trust people around me. Yeah. It's not me. Yeah. It's not a monolith. Yeah. It's, it's a group of people for one goal. Yeah. Let's put up this show and I need them, and they inform me, yeah. and I, I trust them. You do it well, my friend. Always a pleasure, Ruben. I, I, you know, I always appreciate talking to you. Thank you. Have a great time tonight. That's Ruben Santiago Hudson on the carpet. I think the carpet may just be, might just about be done. I think everyone's just about here. So thank you for joining us tonight. If you want to go to a theater, come to Broadway. Come see Cost of Living here at Manhattan Theater Club. And it's one of the best non-for-profit theater companies in the world. Just go to their website, ManhattanTheaterClub.com. Find out more about Manhattan Theater Club. This is Richard Ridge signing off. We'll see you at the theater. Take care, everyone.